to MSDS? Where's the material safety data sheet? Where's the layout of the company? Why, why the chemicals wasn't stored in a dry place? Why they didn't call out farm truck like they did in 2004? But they put water on the chemical that reacts. How are we going to solve this? We need a federal criminal investigation. EPA Region 4 is the worst region in the United States. Look it up. All right, we're going to get right into it today. We're going to talk about the Biolab fire in Georgia because when I heard about it right off, something didn't set right with me. And if you guys didn't know, in 2004, Biolab actually had a fire there. Let me read you what the report says. A settlement reached over 2004 Biolab Blaze. The parent company of the chemical manufacturer Biolab has agreed to a settlement stemming from a fire seven years ago at a warehouse in Georgia. Under the terms of the deal, Chemtura Corporation will place $7 million in a fund to be made available to residents, property owners, and businesses that were impacted by the blaze which produced a chemical cloud and closed local highways. A federal bankruptcy court in Manhattan approved the deal on January 25th. Kimchura had filed for Chapter 11 protection there in March 2009. This will be the second fire at that same location. What we have up next here is the, is the state rep, the person who's in charge and going out and looking at these facilities. Listen closely to what he says. And I'll see you in a second. Um, we will call um, Kenny Johnson. Thank you for inviting me. I am the state representative for soil and water conservation. I'm the first black man to be elected to this position. Since 1937, since the creation of soil and water. I uh, worked in a field like this before. And uh, you catch my breath. But this company is called a COD. What I mean is, it's a chemical oxygen demand. They treat their own water. And the chemicals that they keep on property, sulfuric acid, MIBK, that will kill you. Everybody in Rockdale County need to uh, go to the doctor and uh, check out their blood for toxins. Please get that out. They used to send me out every time, at least every other month. So, please. Next thing is, I asked for a federal criminal investigation. This is not the first time. This is the second time. I've been asking for this three weeks ago to Senator Also, Senator Warnoff, and Congressman Hank Johnson. Both of the off all the officers say they was gonna do an inquiry and have the DOJ get involved. I had the HOA on the on the phone calls with me. Three weeks later okay. Three weeks later, what we have? Fire. But they say it's an accident. Where's the MSDS? Where's the material safety data sheet? Where's the layout of the company? Why why the chemicals wasn't stored in a dry place? Why they didn't call out farm truck like they did in 2004? But they put water on the chemical that reacts. How are we going to solve this? We need a federal criminal investigation. EPA Region 4 is the worst region in the United States. Look it up. Rockdale County been out of federal compliance for four decades. I've been fighting for six years. They put a guy on the ballot illegally. He wasn't an incoming. So I'm pulling out warrants now. Yeah, the governor is scared. I've been fighting and been saying that that company was going to explode. No one listened. We got to remove this company out of this community. Now, we got one other company that's in there. That same way. 
It's called Prat. P R A T T. By eight, eight, eight o'clock at night, you can smell the chlorine. They have 1.7 tons of recycled paper. I'm the only one that have inspected that. We don't have enough inspectors to go in these companies. They know that. And they're not qualified. They know that. What I'm angry at, too, is that $850 million of our taxes went to this company to kill us. Y'all are in charge. Y'all are elected official. We need a federal criminal investigation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. There's a strange thing happening with whistleblowers, and if you listen to his tone, he was dead serious on going after them, getting a federal investigation going, and holding people accountable, right? Because that's what we need in America. We need to hold people accountable. Everybody got a trophy, see? See how everybody got a trophy's working out? No one's being held accountable. No heads are rolling. Everyone just fades out into the sunset. Now this gentleman, hardcore dude, going after it. He wants to do what's right for his community. He's whistleblowing. He's, he's threatening legal action. And then guess what happened? Georgia environmental official collapses and dies after testifying about the biolab fire. A Georgia environmental official has died after he suddenly collapsed near the state capitol on Tuesday, October 8th. So right after he did this, <laughs> you guys ever heard of Seth? <laughs> Seth Richards? You ever heard of all these other whistleblowers? How about the guys from Boeing who started whistleblowing on Boeing and all of a sudden they wound up dead? Just do your homework on whistleblowers. And what happens to them? Okay, I tried to bring that up to your attention in the last video. So, the official identified as Rockdale County Soil and Water Conservation District Supervisor Kenny Johnson, who you just heard from, has just testified in a public meeting about the toxic chemical plume and plant fire that occurred outside of Atlanta on September 29th. Shortly after his testimony, the 62-year-old Georgia environmental official collapsed. He was rushed to Grady Memorial Hospital where he passed away. Okay? I'm not saying nothing. Draw your own conclusions. It's There's something rotten in Denmark. You got that? There's something rotten in Denmark. None of the three-letter, four-letter agencies are doing their job. No one's out inspecting these places. I think the definite conclusion that the American people could draw for their own selves without any input from anybody, just watching the last several, you know, crises, if you will, right? The hurricanes and this fire. If you start watching this and really paying attention and listening to the real stories, not the liars on MSNBC, CBS, CB, because they're still not telling you there are thousands, tens of thousands of people dead in North Carolina, tens of thousands. They still have people believing there's a couple hundred people, okay? I have some insider information coming up on that. My son's been boots on the ground there, and I'm going to share with you guys some of the stuff that he told me, okay? Hit that like button if you found this informational. Share it with your friends so people can understand what we're up against, and please stay vigilant because no one's going to care for you better than you or your family, actually. And the most capable hand is at the end of your wrist. Not your first rodeo, but you, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but you were just down there testing and, and you're feeling a little sick. That's right. I can tell you, um, you know, I had my nose cauterized in East Palestine. I volunteer to do this and go in and help communities, so I'm not complaining. But I can really tell when there's something without my testing results. And um, something was just uh, 48 hours ago, there were people coughing up blood, passing out. And I was, you know, around the perimeter and the people around me, we all had intense headaches and, uh, you know, I got a sore throat. So um, I really feel for these people. Uh, fortunately for me, I'm, you know, back where I live and, and have relatively fresh air. But these people that are continuing to be inundated by the ongoing plume, I really feel for them. So I'm not going to speculate, but there's been chlorine gas in the air for now over a week. 
Uh, oh, and East Palestine, vinyl chloride was the focus, but there's a whole lot of other stuff that was combusted. So here, I mean, really the only thing I see being communicated by the media or the EPA or Georgia's local FEMA is that they're looking into chlorine, but obviously there's a lot more chemicals that could have been con created through that combustion, correct? That is absolutely correct. Uh, and to put everything in perspective too, I wanna set the background for this for some of the new listeners. Uh, I have an incredible scientific team around me of toxicologists, uh, environmental scientists, and over 200 years of experience. My role on the team is being on the front lines to take the incoming missiles from plaintiff's attorneys, from the EPA, and all the trolls, which I can handle. But I want to tell you and that scientific team has had some discussions with EPA Region 4. This is not EPA Region 5, and I want to be very clear, although, you know, I've been a whistleblower with EPA Region 5 in East Palestine, I give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And I want to put things in perspective uh, from the scientific team today that it has been verified that at least 12 million pounds of chlorine compound has burned, could be as high as 20 million. We don't know yet. East Palestine, as bad as it was, was 2 million pounds of chlorine compounds, including vinyl chloride. And, PVC. and, in, and in English, to dummies like me, what does that mean to the average person? 12 Here's million. Here's what it means. The products of incomplete combustion, dioxins and cancer-causing benzene compounds that are called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Oh. I, Jordan, we were both involved in this. I never thought there'd be an event that is now six times greater of chlorine compound burn. And it's worse than that. All these chlorine compounds were sitting on plastic pallets. And there was styrene and styrofoam in the building. And all of these... All of these compounds, when they burn, create dioxins and a whole host of other chemicals, irrespective of the phosgene and all the other gas. And this is uh, from Shana. Shana was the first one. She reached out to me and tested. I, I'm see, you see this right here? This is a retain. Yeah. This is off. This is what you see there. That's polystyrene, and this is picked up from her yard. This came basically. Uh, right now, 20 to 30 miles away, this was an invasion of people's airspace. You see that ash? I kept yeah. a lot of extra, and this, this got delivered to the lab on Tuesday. That is the polystyrene or styrene foam. It is a scientific fact. When that burns, it gives off dioxins. And unfortunately, the EPA said, we're only testing for asbestos. And there's no, well, of course, there's no asbestos. And it, it just ties in. You can't find what you don't look for. Here we go again. But there are signs, I want to say, I give credit, there are signs that EPA Region 4 might end up being more transparent. They're, they're not testing for dioxins yet. There's a sign that they may work with me and my team instead of launching a smear campaign like EPA Region 5 did. So I want to believe in the best of people until they prove otherwise. So let's give EPA... Region four a chance, and I'm not here to demonize the EPA. I only I only hold the EPA accountable when they start their smear campaigns or we catch them lying and deceiving. But I just found that this was very interesting that they had another fire in 2004, that they put a $7 million fund in place to help the people affected by the first one. And now here we are with something that's probably a hundred times bigger than the last one. The particulate matters, have you heard about that? The particulate matters that are floating around in the air, break the blood ba brain barrier. You heard him talk about how some of the, all, most of that stuff were on plastic pallets. When that stuff gets all mixed up into the air and thrown out there, we've already got proof that the plastics are breaking the blood brain barrier and causing problems in human and animal life, right? What's going on here? <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys on the next video. Man, this is crazy.